In the mid-1920s, a vicious monster lurked among the people of New York, kidnapping at least three children who would never be seen alive again. But it is likely he took the lives of many more. Not only did this twisted old man lure away children to do horrific things to them with what he called his implements of hell, he also ate the meat of some of his victims. When he was x-rayed upon his arrest, dozens of needles were found lodged in his body which he admitted to doing to himself as it gave him pleasure. He did not only enjoy receiving and causing physical pain, he also sent disgusting letters to the parents of 10-year-old Grace Budd. The monster had convinced her to let him take her to what he claimed was a birthday party. Instead, he killed and ate her, and detailed the foul act in a letter. This creature has gone by many names, including the Gray Man, the Boogeyman, the Werewolf of Wisteria, and the Moon Maniac. But his real name was Albert Fish, the Brooklyn Vampire. The monster known as Albert Fish was born Hamilton Howard Fish on May 19, 1870 to Randall and Ellen Fish. His father was more than twice his mother's age and was 75 years old when Albert was born. There were three other Fish children and a fourth named Albert who had passed away. Hamilton Howard would adopt this deceased brother's name in later years. Mental illness was sprinkled throughout the family. Albert's mother suffered from hallucinations while one of his brothers was institutionalized and several other relatives had slightly less severe conditions. In 1875, Randall Fish had a heart attack and Albert was put into an orphanage when his single mother could not support the family. It was at the orphanage that the real trouble began for young Albert. He was at St. John's Orphanage in Washington, D.C. until 1880 and endured horrific abuse. The children were regularly whipped in front of each other, and over time, Albert began to enjoy both being beaten and watching the other children suffer. It was here that he took the name Albert to avoid being called Ham and Eggs. In 1880, his mother got a steady job and was able to take her son home. But the damage and violence from the orphanage stayed with him. He began harming himself with a studded paddle, and in 1882, he started spending time with an older boy who pushed Albert further into depravity. He was introduced to bizarre practices such as eating human waste. Around this time, Albert started going to public baths where he would watch other boys change. In 1890, Fish moved to New York City and worked as a male prostitute. He also began abusing young boys. After spending eight years in this way, his mother arranged a marriage for him with a teenager named Anna Marie Hoffman. The new couple had six children, whom Albert mistreated in a variety of ways, taking inspiration from the treatment he had received at St. John's Orphanage. Being married did not stop any of Albert's depravity. He went on a date with a man to a wax museum, where he saw models of human organs that had been opened up to show the inner workings. This spurred an interest in recreating the wax sculptures using real human parts. In 1903, Fish spent a brief time in the infamous Sing Sing prison for theft. One of the first known victims of Albert's abuse was a teenager named Thomas Kedden. He met the 19-year-old while working in Wilmington, Delaware. His later writings indicate that Thomas was mentally handicapped, but this did not stop Albert. Over two weeks, he tortured the young man in an old barn. Fish had intended on killing and dismembering him and cooking the pieces at home. But the hot weather gave him pause as he feared that the smell would get him caught as he transported the meat. Instead, he cut the boy's member off and left him in the barn with a $10 bill, never to hear from him again. In 1917, Albert's wife left him and their children, taking most of their possessions. This pushed the creature further over the line of insanity. He began having auditory hallucinations, believing that people from the Bible were giving him commands, and also began pushing needles into his groin and stomach. The other ways that Albert hurt himself included using a studded paddle and lighting a wick with lighter fluid on fire after inserting it into himself. He also encouraged his children and their friends to use the paddle on him. Albert's violence against children also escalated, with his preferred victims being handicapped or black children, as he did not think that their disappearances would be as noticeable if he killed them. And unfortunately, this seems to have been the case, as the three known murder victims were all white children, and none of the others can be confirmed. The first of Albert's known victims was an eight-year-old boy named Francis McDowell. The boy and his mother, Anna, had seen a man walking near their home in Staten Island on July 15, 1924. 
Anna would later describe how the man shuffled down the road talking to himself and how everything about him seemed faded and gray. That afternoon, Francis disappeared while playing in the park. His friends said that they had last seen him following an old man into the woods. When his family and police searched the woods, they found him. He had been stripped naked, beaten, and strangled with his own suspenders. The viciousness of the crime made police question as to whether an elderly man could have done it. Aside from the sightings, the only clue that they had were the raisins that the boy had eaten prior to his death, and which they believed were used to lure him into the woods. The next known victim of Albert Fish was a four-year-old boy named Billy Gaffney. On February 11, 1927, the child was playing outside his family's apartment with the neighbors. They were being watched by a 12-year-old who went inside for a moment to check in on his baby sister. When he came back out, Billy and the other boy were gone. Billy would never be seen again and the other child was found hiding. When asked, he said that the boogeyman had taken Billy. It was not until after Albert was arrested that the truth about what happened to Billy would come to light. In a horrific letter, the creature described what he did to the boy. Be warned, this is graphic and shows the pure evil inside of this monster. Fish took him to a dump where they would not be seen. He stripped him naked and burned the clothes, then tied Billy up and left him there so he could return later with what he called his implements of hell. A knife, a handsaw, and a meat cleaver. He used a belt that he had cut into strips to whip the child. He then cut off the boy's ears, nose, gouged out his eyes, and slit his mouth from ear to ear. By this time, Billy was dead. Fish opened his stomach and drank blood from the wound. He cut up the body and packaged most of it in weighted potato sacks to dispose of in some water along the road, but he put the facial parts, some of the stomach, and his pelvic area from just below the belly button to the upper thigh into a bag to take with him to eat. The sick creature detailed how he cooked and ate the pieces in the letter. He roasted the boys behind with bacon and made a stew with the pieces that he had cut from Billy's face. He wrote that he had never tasted anything as good as the boy's backside. The case that would lead to Albert's arrest is likely the most well-known murder that he committed. On June 3, 1928, he answered an ad that the Budd family had placed in a newspaper seeking work for their son Edward. Fish had planned on taking the boy with him, but when he arrived at their Manhattan home, he saw the Budd's daughter, 10-year-old Grace, and made up his mind to take her instead. He had brought the family some small gifts that he said came from the farm that he owned and wanted Edward to work on. He pulled a wad of cash out and asked Grace to count it. The family was extremely poor and they had never seen such wealth. When she was done counting the less than $100, he gave her 50 cents for some candy as a reward and some money to her brother so that he could go to the movies. The Bud family had been drawn in by the disgusting creature and so when he asked if he could take Grace to his niece's birthday party, they were hard pressed to refuse as the girl rarely got to have fun and Fish had presented himself as a wealthy and kind man. When they did not return, the Buds contacted the police. They found out that the name that Fish had given them, Frank Howard, was fake, and the address of the party did not exist. Despite tips and information on the man who had taken Grace, police made little progress in the case. This would change in November of 1934, when the monster sent the Bud family a letter. Edward was forced to read this aloud to his parents as they were illiterate. It told of a man that the killer had known, who worked on a steamship, the man had visited China during a famine and found human meat being sold. This acquaintance's description of the meat had led Fish to want to try human meat for himself. He then went on to write how he had tricked the Buds into letting him take their daughter. Fish took the young girl to an empty house that he had picked out for the murder. He strangled the poor girl, then cut her into pieces. According to the letter, it took the monster nine days to eat her. While the letter mortified the Bud family, it also provided police with some clues as to the identity of its author. The envelope was stamped with the letters NYCBA, which stood for the New York Chauffeurs Benevolent Association. Police learned that some of the stationery had been taken by a janitor and left in a boarding house. Investigators would then learn from the landlord that a man named Albert Fish had just vacated the same room and was expecting mail that he had asked the landlord to hold for him. The lead investigator, William F. King, staked out the boarding house to wait for the killer to return. When Fish came back, he was taken to the police station for questioning. The monster did not attempt to hide the fact that he had killed young Grace. He was locked up and his trial began on March 11, 1935. The trial lasted 10 days, during which Fish claimed he was insane. 
Psychiatrists detailed the sick compulsions that drove the creature to kill, which included sadism, masochism, picarism, which is when a person derives pleasure from penetrating another with sharp objects, eating human waste, pedophilia, and necrophilia. Albert's children testified how he had taught them various games that involved abuse and masochism. By the trial's end, there was little doubt that Fish was insane for the jurors, but also that he was so evil that he had to be punished and he was sentenced to death. He would remain in Sing Sing prison until his execution. On January 16, 1936, Fish was sent to the electric chair.